Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the pressure mounted every day in the relationship. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, share, pay it forward to somebody who could use the wisdom and the education. I'll jump right in. Throughout the body of the relationship, when you were with the narcissist, the pressure mounted and mounted each and every day, whether you knew it or not. Now, keep in mind, when you entered that relationship, most likely you entered it knowing one thing and thinking something else, meaning you believed that you were on the, headed in the same direction as that individual, and you knew that, that you wanted to contribute to a relationship, building a future, perhaps creating a family, perhaps growing old together, etc. But each and every day when you were in that relationship, it was becoming more and more cumbersome. And I will tell you right now, that does include the euphoric stage or the love bomb stage. You may say, well, not really, Andrew, what are you talking about? I'll tell you, even in the love bomb stage, was everything all puppies and rainbows each and every day? No, it wasn't. Believe me when I tell you, you think of it that way, that everything was great. It wasn't. There were some challenges in there too. You were being tested in the beginning. You were being ghosted at times or not treated properly. This is how the narcissist sizes you up. They give you a heavy dose of fake love and fake, fake empathy in the beginning of the relationship and fake adoration, all the things, all the positive attributes that you possess. And they fake their way through it to get you to fall in love with them many times or to get you to enter a relationship with them. No sooner do you enter the relationship with them than they apply the gas even more and they apply more and more pressure on you to do what they want and there's no time for you to catch your breath. It's like a whirlwind. It's like a, it's like every single day there's something new, a new adventure around the corner. You're traveling to new places you never thought of or you're experiencing new foods, cuisines, cultures. You're meeting people left, right and center. You're going to events. There's no time for just you. This again is on purpose. It is meant to keep you confused and to ensnare you in the narcissistic abusive cycle because it feels too good to be true. And just like a used car, when you go to buy a used car and it has a brand new paint job and you don't give it a test drive because you think the paint job is good enough, that's the narcissist in a nutshell. You did not give the relationship the proper amount of time in the beginning. You did not trust your instincts. You did not pay attention to your intuition and you brushed aside all of the red flags. Now this was not your fault. The truth of the matter is, is that what you did is you were looking to build a relationship and you thought that the individual that you were entering the relationship with was a stable or healthy individual. What they did is this individual, they wore a mask and they manipulated you. They mirrored back to you what you wanted to see. They mirrored back all of your beautiful qualities. Are you a religious person? Did you like to exercise? Did you like to cook? Did you like to do yoga? Did you like to surf? Whatever you like to do, the narcissist would mirror these things back to you because they're trying to get you, or they were trying to get you, to fall in love with them and to assimilate with you. In other words, you're, they, you, they want you thinking, wow, this person, where have they been my whole life? I can't believe this. I can't let this one go. How come this person's single? Wink, wink. They've been divorced two or three times. Who knows? Nothing against divorce. I get it. I'm just sharing with you. The narcissist entered the relationship wearing a mask and they wanted to manipulate you. Now, the pressure mounted each and every day in the relationship, specifically once you put a wedding ring on the narcissist's finger or you moved in with them or you loaned them money or you went into business with them or you bought a home with them or you had kids with them or all of the above, one, one or any of these things is more than enough that the narcissist needs to ensnare you in the web of manipulation. But when they get there, when they get you where they want you, in other words, you've now entered Devaluation Street and you did not even know what Devaluation Street was because you thought you were in a stable, healthy relationship. Nothing could have been further from the truth. But once they had you where they wanted you, they began to slowly remove the fake empathy, the fake love, the fake spending time with you. Of course, they did spend time with you here and there. In the beginning, they spent a lot of time with you, but did they want to do that? Sure, in the beginning, I believe they did. But in the devaluation stage, they rip it away from you just like a candy, just like a baby taking, someone taking candy away from a baby. The whole point is, that analogy may not be the best, but it's real. The narcissist withholds so many things throughout the relationship. Number one, they withhold their real identity, who they are. And do you ever really get to know who the narcissist is? No, you don't. They don't even know themselves. All they do know is that they have an endless supply of masks hanging on the wall wherever they currently are and they can peel any one of them off at any given moment. 
slap it on their face, super glue it for a period of time, wear it, manipulate other individuals, perhaps even looking for your replacement, take it off when they go to bed, throw on a new one tomorrow, wash, rinse, repeat, rinse, wash, repeat, whatever that expression is. Point being, the weight of the relationship, it became very cumbersome for you. It became extremely heavy. And this was on purpose. The narcissist, again, they were depleting your resources, which I mentioned so frequently are were your time, money, energy, effort, empathy, love, your social status, your circle, your job, your tangible assets, places you liked to go to, your hobbies, anything that, that you liked, the narcissist wanted to take that away from you. And why they wanted to take it away from you is because they wanted you isolated. They wanted you to believe that they were the number one thing in your life and that you had to appease them and put them way high up on the pedestal and that they were the priority, not you. And remember, you were working for the narcissist. You were doing so many things for the narcissist to the detriment of yourself. You know that, you, that that's what you did and that's exactly what the narcissist wanted you to do. The narcissist wanted to take your money, your energy, your sleep, your job, everything from you because the narcissist does not and or did not want you to succeed. Keep that in mind. They don't ever want you to succeed. They want you stuck in the quagmire where they vibrate very low, lower than the pond or the river behind me. And they want to take your energy, which is higher than the sun, and they want to exchange where they vibrate to where you vibrate. I've mentioned this many times and created multiple videos on the energetic exchange between you and the narcissist. This is 100% accurate. When you fall into these narcissistic relationships and you don't know what you are up against, it is advantage narcissists throughout the whole body of the relationship and they know this. They want to steal your energy, your social circle. They want to steal everything from you and they want you believing that you can't live without them. This is exactly what the narcissist wants and it works until when? Until it doesn't. When it doesn't work, that's when you find my channel. That's when you get your first light bulb moment and you understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. And this narcissistic abusive relationship that you were a part of, it didn't just happen to you. It happened to hundreds of millions of us. It's happening right now as I'm creating this video. People are entering toxic narcissistic relationships and other people are being discarded. Other people are ending it themselves. Perhaps this is the first video where you become empowered and you say, you know what, Andrew? You're right. Today is the day I'm going to block the narcissist. Today is the day I'm going to go no contact, delete all flying monkeys and remove myself from their toxicity and just drown out the noise. I am not believing in the mask any longer. And if that's you, God bless you. That's empowering. That day will come for you if it hasn't come already. It will just take time. The healing path, remember, it's not linear. It takes time, a lot of time. And in your time, you will heal with the proper tools that I'm providing for you. You need to understand, however, that there are so many layers of the onion that you must peel back post-narcissistic relationship. You need to understand how you fell into the relationship, that you were manipulated, that it wasn't your fault, that you have a lot of work to do, that you have to heal, including perhaps childhood wounds. Also, perhaps you would have to see a therapist who unfortunately has gone through the narcissistic abusive cycle themselves. Another thing you'll have to do is journal, meditate, slow down, understand that you were placed in the trauma bond and that you need to break this. Nobody is gonna come knock on your door and check in on you. Nobody is gonna, many, very few people will even understand what you're up against. If it was a romantic relationship or a friendship, they're just gonna tell you, oh, it's no big deal. Just go make new friends, who cares? Or just get strike up another romantic relationship. These people don't get it. They won't get it until it either happens to them or they never will get it, and it's not their fault. The thing is, you too, at one point, didn't have the wisdom. You did not know what you were up against. But getting back on track, the weight of the relationship, it gets so heavy. You have to work for the narcissist, and each and every day you're being decimated. Each and every day your phone's being blown up and you're being blamed. Each and every day you go to bed scratching your head like, was that proper behavior at the dinner table? Was I being treated properly? Was I just, did I just experience all that negative rhetoric about how I'm worthless and I don't amount to anything and I'm lucky to be with this person? Yeah, you did. And when this happens over and over and over again, including verbal abuse, that is an insidious thing that creeps up on you. You may think, I'm strong enough, Andrew, I can handle the ver verbal abuse. Let me tell you right now, it's like death by a thousand paper cuts. Eventually it will catch up with you. It's not healthy, it's not, to it's not good, it's not stable, it's not sustainable. And the narcissist knows this. Remember what I shared with you earlier. The narcissist wants to exchange their negative toxic energy into you and they wanna steal your positive, beautiful, bright, shining light. 
or your empathy and love, everything that you possess, they want that for themselves. And this is 100% a fact. Does the narcissist know what they're doing? Absolutely. Can they lay off the gas even for a minute? Very rarely, if they need something or if they want something from you or if they haven't decimated you yet, they can give you a tiny little euphoric stage or a love bomb stage, a little breadcrumb of hope, of inspiration, and then boom, they're gonna go back to doing exactly what they did before. Having said all of these things, the relationship, it is not sustainable. It never was sustainable. It never could be sustainable. I'm talking about the narcissistic relationship because when you have one individual working towards the goals that they, they proclaimed in the beginning of the relationship, in other words, raising a family or building a house or creating a business, whatever, and the narcissist, the person that you fell in love with or did, this, did these things with, all they wanna do is nothing because they're lazy and cowards and bullies and they just wanna get their name on the document and you do all the work and then you're stuck holding the bag while they take your money from you. Yes, it happens with mortgages, it happens with houses, businesses, tangible assets. If you ever want to understand what the narcissist really cares about, try divorcing the narcissist. Just try it. Believe me when I tell you, it will be a challenging experience and for you veterans out there who have done this and accomplished it, please drop comments below, help everybody out on the channel. But the narcissist will show their true colors when you're divorcing them because they will drag things out many times. They will feel entitled to upwards of 70, 80% of your assets when in fact they never lifted a finger to deserve any of them. They will learn the laws and the rules in wherever you live, your jurisdiction you live in, and they will play them to a, to a T. Believe me when I tell you, it is not fun divorcing the narcissist. But I'm gonna get back on track. This relationship, it became heavier and heavier each and every day. And like I said, you, you, when you were in the narcissistic relationship, let's say you married the narcissist as an example, well, you didn't just have the, the weight or the burden of being with them. You had the same thing with their immediate family members, friends, your job, your social circle. You had, you had no time for yourself. What you were doing was putting out fires left, right, and center. Fires that you did not create, you did not start, but yet were created for you to put out. Understand what I'm sharing with you. The narcissist needs drama, confusion, manipulation, and chaos. They don't like stability. They don't like pe people just being. They can't live in the present moment. They live for the present moment. That again is why many times throughout this relationship you're thinking about, what you would be doing is you would be making plans with the narcissist. Let's say it was a holiday, vacation, birthday, whatever it was, weekend getaway. Well, did you ever really spend quality time with them? No, you didn't. Why? Because they couldn't sit still. They were always on their smartphone or smartphones looking for your replacement or claiming that they had to work when they're actually texting people in different languages around the globe or they were on dating apps or when you would go to bed at night, any night of the year, would they stay awake longer than you? Absolutely. Many times you would roll over. Would they be sleeping right next to you? No. Many times they wouldn't even be in the bed next to you. Why? Because they're downstairs on a couch or a sofa or a chair texting complete strangers, flirting, if you will, getting supply, making themselves feel important, and that's what they do. Other times you'd roll over and, and the narcissist would be there next to you. What would happen then? Of course, they're on their smartphone or one of them underneath the covers or with their back is facing you. So when you roll over, all you see is their back. That's probably how you went to sleep, actually. You did not spoon or hold each other or hug each other. You're not going to get any of that. Once that wedding ring is slipped on your finger, you're going to become devaluated, devalued more and more and more. But that sleeping for or sleeping with the narcissist, that's a whole different video I can create. But my point is the narcissist would be awake many times when you were asleep getting your replacement or getting supply because you perhaps didn't provide it that much that day or their job didn't provide it or whatever happened. This is why the narcissistic relationships are not sustainable. You are constantly on edge. You are constantly being gaslit. You are constantly not allowed to be yourself. You are working for the narcissist. That's why your sleep patterns become disrupted. That's why you gain weight or lose weight. That's why you lose all of your hobbies. That's why you lose your friends. That's why many times you're isolated from your immediate family members. That's why you are relocated halfway around the globe many times. That's why the narcissist asks you to, to not work. They'll take care of you financially and then no sooner do you quit your job and or let's say you got pregnant or had a child, then what do they do? They now financially abused you, told you that you're worthless. Why don't you work? I, I never told you I was gonna support you. And then if they don't do that, then they withhold finances. In other words, they will tell you that they will take care of you for the rest of your life, but then when you quit your job and or have a child, what, because they wanted you to or you agreed to do it, what do they do? Then they withhold affection, they withhold finances, they told you that you gained weight, lost weight, that you're worthless, and what do they do then? They go out and look for your replacement. Keep in mind, when you were married to the narcissist or 
any part of the relationship, maybe it's your mom, dad, aunt, uncle, neighbor, a coworker, pers person in a community or organization, you are not the only source of supply. You may think you are, and I'm not speaking of romantic uh, relationships exclusively. I'm talking about anything. The narcissist can get supply from pets. I created that video. As a matter of fact, they get a lot of supply from pets. They get supply from status. They get supply from locations, from vacations, from pictures, from social media, from human beings, from traveling, from creating disruption on airplanes, from skipping lines when they're going to uh, pay a bill. They get, to, they get supply from everything, from blowing up evenings in restaurants because the waiter put in three ice cubes in their glass of water instead of four and now there's a rage fit. And what happens? Well, everyone's energy gets disrupted at that restaurant and the narcissist, because they complain so much, maybe they get a free meal out of it and they're gobbling up everything, not only the free meal because they're cheap, but also they're gobbling up all the attention that they're getting, negative or positive, from the wait staff, from the owner of the restaurant and from the people, the patrons, the people that are there. This is why the narcissist, the relationship with these people, they're not sustainable and you need to run for the hills. You need to cut them off, go no contact, block them, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them. If not now, when? Spending one minute longer in a narcissistic relationship when you, uh, when you have identified that this individual is a toxic individual is one minute too long. Get the message. You need to understand that the weight of this relationship, it collapses each and every time eventually. It's just a matter of time when it collapses. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. God bless you. Remember, the weight of this relationship, it was it was going to crumble eventually. It's just a matter of time. Did it crumble within a year, six months, five years, six years, a decade, 50 years? Who knows? But eventually, everybody A reveals themselves over time, and eventually these relationships have an expiration date. It's just a matter of time. Do you figure them out and remove yourself from the relationship, or are you discarded? Or the third option, which my hope it is not you, is you stay trapped in the zombie-like trance-like state, the narcissistic fog, where you are existing, you are not living. Guys, I moved the camera a bunch because there's a little baby there and I didn't want to get the baby in the video, but it seems like the baby crept their way in there a lot. So anyway, I did my best. I hope you guys have a great afternoon. I love you all. God bless you. Remember, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye. <laughs>